Now we're going to shift to two related ERP components, the P3 wave and the late positive potential. The P3, or P300, is present in almost any task, but it's classically observed in the oddball paradigm. We could take the auditory oddball paradigm we previously discussed for the mismatch negativity, slow it down a little, and have subjects press a button for each stimulus to indicate whether it's the lower pitch or the higher pitch. It would sound like this. In paradigms like this, the oddball generates a much larger P3 than the standard. The P3 is largest near the PZ electrode site, but it can be seen at virtually every electrode site on the top half of the head. You can get this kind of effect for virtually any kind of stimuli, as long as the task requires the subject to classify the stimuli into a frequent category and a rare category. And it's the task to find categories that matter, not the probabilities of the physical stimuli per se. For example, imagine that we present the letters A, B, C, D, and E with equal probability in random order on a video monitor. And imagine that we ask subjects to press one button for the letter B and another button for any other letter. This task requires classifying B as one category with a probability of 20%. And it requires grouping the other four letters together as a separate category with a probability of 80%. Although each individual non-target letter has a probability of 20%, they're grouped into a task-defined category with a probability of 80%. We should therefore get a bigger P3 for Bs than for the other letters. This is how the P3 task in the ERP core works, except that B wasn't always the target letter. A different letter was defined as the oddball for each block of trials. As you can see, the oddball generated a larger P3 than the standards, because the probability of the standard category was 80%, even though each individual standard letter had a probability of 20%. In general, the amplitude of the P3 is inversely related to the probability of the stimulus. If we use probabilities of 10% and 90%, rather than 20% and 80%, we'd get an even bigger P3 for the oddballs and an even smaller P3 for the standards. I could talk about the P3 for hours, but instead, have a look at this chapter by John Polich in the Oxford Handbook of ERP Components. Now let's shift from cognition to emotion, which is summarized in the chapter from Greg Hychek's lab. There are several emotion-related ERP components, but here I'll focus on the late positive potential, or LPP. As you probably know, emotion has two main dimensions, arousal and valence. Arousal is the intensity of the emotional response, and valence is whether it's positive or negative. The LPP primarily reflects arousal and not valence. In this study, people looked at pleasant pictures like babies laughing, unpleasant pictures like rotting meat, and neutral pictures like desks. Both the pleasant and unpleasant pictures were high in arousal, so both elicited a large LPP. Some researchers think that the LPP is the same thing as the P3. It has a pretty similar scalp distribution but other researchers think that other sources also contribute to the LPP. There are lots of other interesting ERP components as well. I don't have time to go into all of them now, but you can read about them, guess where, in the Oxford Handbook of ERP Components.